everybody and welcome to stitches and prayers my name is Pam and this is my supposed to be bi-weekly podcast we'll get into that later where I talk about all of the things that I'm working on either crocheting or knitting if that's something that you are interested in please stick around don't forget to like the video subscribe down below and let's get started so today I'm wearing a um, little top. I crocheted this oh, quite a few years ago. This is probably seven or eight years old. I looked for the pattern and I can't find it. I apologize. I it's I don't know what it is. I don't know the name of it. I tried looking like open work. Um, pattern and it's just I can't find it the only one that I found that was close to it came up with the 404 so that it's no longer out there but it's got um, just some cluster right in here I could probably redo it if I had to and then like some um, little shell stitches where you double crochet two and then chain two and double crochet two and go around that way but as far as a pattern goes for you, I don't have it. And I apologize. Um, that is something that happens with things that were made so long ago sometimes. I, I know that I didn't buy the pattern. It was a free pattern on the internet. Um, but yeah, now it's coming up as a 404. Can't be found. But in any case, Let's move on to finished objects. And I have one today. And let's make a change. Haha, -ha, I have a diggery tea. And it is finished. Um, I didn't look at my notes. I want to say I made a size three. I should have looked at my notes. I'm a bad podcaster or vlog caster. Um, but yeah, I didn't look at my notes, but I pretty much followed this two pattern except for, um, if I remember correctly, she just has you pick up here and then do like a little ribbing. It's a drop shoulder. So the shoulder is way down here. It's just a box. The number there's no shaping in it and I've been wearing this I did finish this so I was supposed to podcast and technically I did record a video on May 29th and then I didn't feel like editing and I put it off and when I went to edit it my um, I had it in Canva and it said that it was too big. I even, I always do it in like segments and the segment that one of the segments I went to go do was too big. So then I was like, Ugh, I don't feel like recording again. So it went for, that was like on Monday. I was going to release it the following Friday. And then, so I just put it off. And I'm like, okay, I'll just record it again in segments. And then I just never edited it. And life has been busy. So I have had this done since May 29th when I was supposed to record the last time. This is made out of Knit Crate yarn. It's a linen cotton blend. And it's been like in the 90s here in Illinois. And I've been wearing this outside and it's, it's not as warm as I mean it's not as cool as like a tank top type of thing but it's not extremely hot no, no more so than just a regular old t-shirt so I've been loving it this is I want to say old barn might be red barn something barn and I no longer have the but the labels and then this down here is cucumber and it's it is a pale green color 
and it like fades in and out with like darker greens and cream and lighter greens. It this is two skeins of the um, cucumber. And this right here, I had two skeins of the Red Barn, and this is all I had left. Um, so I could have, I was, I could have made these just a little bit longer, but I really like that length. So, but that's the that, and I love it, and I'm enjoying wearing it all of the time. So, let's, that is my only finished object. All right, so which one of my Andrea Maori whips do we want to talk about first? This is a very, very heavy Andrea Maori episode. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the one out of the way that's in timeout, and then we'll get into all the rest. Did the vlog last time that didn't go up May 29th I had one full sleeve done and I already have the front and the back you guys have seen them and I was like almost done with the second one I finished it no I was finished with it when I recorded it I did and I finished it and I'm like holding it up like this and I'm like this one seems longer. I held them up and there was like this much too long between the, between the two. So I start looking and I'm like, okay, I have, I have the right amount of stripes here. I have the right amount here. I followed the same pattern here. What in the world is going on? I don't understand. Come to find out. I had to take and count the beige rows in between each one of these stripes. And somehow I had gotten off and there would be, you know, there was supposed to only be eight in between each stripe and there would be 10 or there would be nine. They're, they're, they were wrong. So I had too many increases on this side. So it went wider. So when I was doing my decreases for the raglan side, to, uh, to go this way so the raglans will attach this way to the sweater, right? This piece was too long. So, this is now what I have of a second sleeve. And in all actuality, I did the second sleeve twice. So I've, I've knit three, three sleeves for this sweater that only does, needs two. And the same thing had happened because what I had done was, you know, I finished it off and it was too big. And so, no, yeah, I finished it off and it was too big. So I took it back to the stripe here. And I'm like, okay, I, I must have done, missed some decreases or something. So, you know, again, I counted straight from this stripe until this bind off right here, made sure that was right, and then I started my decreases, and then, you know, it all went to pot. And so now, because I've knit this, that same sleeve twice, it's in timeout, and uh, I don't need it until the fall. I'm not gonna wear it in the 100 degree heat, so, in time out, it sits. I'm mad at it. And that's where it's going to stay. So, it's going to stay in time out. We're going to go ahead and we're going to talk about the whips that you've already seen before. And then we'll move on to some new cast-ons. So, the next one is my Andrea Maori, My Stripes Edition. I'm using her pattern for the everyday sweater. And I believe I was getting ready. I don't know if this gold row was on or if I was up in here the last time I showed this to you guys. Um, 
it has not gotten any love this week the since the last time I well it has because I put that on but since the 29th it has not gotten any love um, it's all in random acrylic yarn mostly red heart because they're all uh, scraps I don't have ball bands for any of them they were projects that I made and I had a cake of it made up and you know and uh, so there's that so that is my everyday sweater stripes edition Andrea Maori has a sweater that's called stripes but I already owned the everyday sweater so I was like she gets enough of my money honestly continuing on with the Andrea Maori I love a drop shoulder as you can tell I like uh, this is one of my favorite shirts um, I have the Andrea Maori Weekender that I made. It's one of my favorites. I wear it in the wintertime. It's nice to throw over um, things as a layering piece. Um, it's also a drop shoulder. But as I'm looking at that, I'm like, I could take that and because the week, Weekender is long sleeve. But I'm like, why can I not knit that in cotton? Because I've got some cotton back here it's the Karen cotton funnel cakes that I was given to you by my sister um, why can I not take that and knit a week under no sleeves in cotton because it's, it's an oversized like this so when did I last Friday a week ago today I'm recording this on Friday, um, June 14th. So last Friday, which would have been the 7th, I was doing math in my head. I decided I was going to cast this on. And let me show you what I've got. I have got an almost complete sweater. I have the front, this is the front that I'm showing you right here. The front is done. I picked up the stitches for the back and I'm showing you the inside because when you make the weekender, um, you knit it in the round, but then when you finish it off. It's finished off with a three bind off, a three needle bind off. That's why these stitches are still live. But you do the you sh the inside or the yeah the the inside is the outside. So this is gonna be the outside of the sweater when I'm finished. It is drop shoulder like I said. This is the Karen Cakes cotton funnel cake and it is lilac. Yes lilac and so that's the color that it, the way that it comes in the cake. And then you saw, you know, this is the way it works up. This right here, I'm working on my second cake. And this is what I've got left of the second cake. The first cake is pretty much from the cast on all the way to the arms. Yeah, to the arms. Um, split for the front and the back and then you work this part flat so I finished that the other day and now it's just working on getting the back so it is a split hem you do the front hem and then you do the back hem just a little bit longer and then you just knit 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 mindless knitting that's why I got so far I'm excited to get that done we do have a, a trip planned to go to Michigan for those of you who don't know I'm from Michigan that's where my family lives get a quick drink and 
our last Andrea Mowry pattern. Unless you've been under a rack somewhere and you don't know or you don't even know who Andrea Mowry is, she released a new pattern on Tuesday. And it's a lot like The Weekender, but not quite. But I had to have it. Had to have it. So again, we have got some care and this I started last night because why not um I have some Karen cotton funnel cake and this is in primrose which is just a very pale soft pink and I'm just here all I've got done is the it's really getting all I've got done is the uh, ribbing. And for this, I'll post a picture of the, of the pattern. It's a drop hem. So it's a bottom up design. And instead of the hem being straight around, um, you know, like normal t-shirts or whatever, where it's all straight from front to back, the hem is lower in the back and so it's it's a cropped top so it like is up higher in the front and then it drops low in the back which is interesting and you achieve that with some short row shaping and of course it's a paid pattern so I can't go into any more detail than that but I'm loving it and I can't wait to wear it I'm hoping to have I would love to I want I'm going to have the purple one done by the time I go to Michigan. And then I will bring along my nebula to be working on while I'm there. And that is what I have been up to since last time you talked to me. If you are only here for the knitting or crocheting portion of the, the vlogcast, um, then we will bid you adieu. But don't forget to like and subscribe the video down below. Comment. Let me know what you like, what you don't like, what I need to change. It's okay. I take criticism well. I might say, okay, that sounds good. And I might say, nope, my pod, my vlogcast, I'm doing it the way I want to do it. Who knows? Who knows? I'm a Gemini, so... They say that that matters. I don't believe in that kind of stuff, but everybody says that I do have two halves. But in any case, and I'll see you guys next time. If you want to stay for the prayers portion of the vlogcast, let's get going. So our song this week is going to be the one that it was on the 29th and I never edited or posted or did anything with but that's okay um and in the song is called what if it were today it was written in 1912 and the bible verse says and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you to myself that where i am there you may be also john 14 3 christians of every generation have longed for christ to return in their lifetime the didache I don't think I said that right. One of the earliest documents in church history says, Let not your lamps be quenched, nor your loins unloosed, but be ready, for you know not the hour in which our Lord will come. Saint Cyril wrote in the fourth century, But let us wait and look for Lord's coming upon the clouds from heaven, then shall angelic trumpets sound. Augustine felt the Lord would return somewhere around the year A.D. 1000. In the 1300s, John Wycliffe, the morning star of the Reformation, studied the signs of the times and concluded that the end of the world and the second coming of Christ would be expect, should be expected immediately. In the 16th century, John Calvin preached we must hunger after Christ until the dawning of that great day when our Lord will fully manifest the glory of his kingdom. 
today his return seems closer than ever. It's not surprising then when the return of Christ has been the theme of hundreds of hymns through the ages. What if it were today was written by Ohio homemaker Leela Morris, whose story has already been told in connection with her hymns, Nearer, Still Nearer, and Let Jesus Come Into Your Heart. It was one of the most popular Second Coming songs of the last hundred years, but look at a much older hymn about the Second Coming. John Newton, the London pastor who wrote Amazing Grace, showed the other side of the Lord's return with his hymn, Day of Judgment, Day of Wonders. It provides an important contrast to Leela's, to Leela Morris's uplifting strings. Day of judgment, day of wonders, hark the trumpet's awful sound. Louder than a thousand thunders shakes the vast creation round. How the summons shall the sinner's heart confound. It's very weird to talk, to say. At his call, the dead awaken, rise to life from earth and sea. All the powers of nature shaken by his look prepares to flee. Careless sinner, what will then become of thee? So let's go into the words of what if it were today. Jesus is coming to earth again. What if it were today? Coming in power and love to reign. What if it were today? Coming to claim his chosen bride, all the redeemed and purified. Over the whole earth scattered wide. What if it were today? Satan's dominion will then be o'er. And oh, that it were today, sorrow and sighing shall be no more. Oh, that it were today. Then shall the dead in Christ arise, coming up to meet him in the skies. When shall those glorious, when shall these glories meet our eyes? What if it were today? Faithful and true, would he be, would he find us here if he should come today? watching in gladness and not in fear if he should come today signs of his coming multiply morning light breaks in eastern sky watch for the time is drawing nigh what if it were today so my question to you is would would he find you lacking or would you rise to meet him in the skies I hope that you will rise to meet him in the skies if he comes today. And I hope that he's able to tell you, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Please let the light of Jesus shine through you. And let's go into our prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for the day that you've given us to come together, to be with you, to go over not just a Bible verse, but also a hymn that sings praises to you. Please help us to be able to answer those questions that we'll be able to rise to meet you in the sky if you were to come today. Please help us to show your light, to show your love to this evil world that the devil has control of. You know all the things that are going on in this world and the craziness that we're living through. The, the days are have to be short until until your second year till you you come to take us home to be with you in heaven i hope that we can be a light be your light to at least one person this week that can come to know you as our their precious lord and savior thank you for the cross thank you for everything that you've done for us and that you are our mediary between the Father that he looks at us through your blood and he sees no sin. Please be with us in the coming weeks until we can come together again. In your precious name, amen. And until next time, remember, this world is not our home. We're just a passing through. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.